Hey, welcome back to another video here at Axe Cards. So today I want to tackle something that I get asked daily almost by parents, anyone buying cards. Um, I often hear, I know nothing about Pokemon cards, but my kid is crazy about them. Um, and really there's not that much to know about it. So Pokemon has been around for... 20 years now we're not having their 20th anniversary and they put out sets about once every four months so there are lots of different cards so important things to know about pokemon just uh, uh, off the hand um, is there are many different variations of them so you can tell the quality of the card by the bottom right i'm not sure how well you can see that there But cards which have a star are rare cards. Then cards which have a circle are common cards. And cards which have a diamond like this are uncommon cards. So those are the, the three main rarities of the card. So just as the names imply common cards are much easier to come by uncommon not as much and rare are tougher so each pack of pokemon cards you do buy will have generally five common cards in it three uncommon cards in it it's going to have one reverse card and one ultra rare card so you might be asking what's a reverse so a reverse card kind of looks like this it's shiny um, it's an alternate version of a card that exists in the set and uh, it, it, they're rarer than those cards because they're harder to come by and many people like to collect them. Now, if you're here because your kid's telling you about Pokemon cards and you don't know anything about them, it probably means that they're after EX cards. So EX cards, just so you know why they're so expensive, EX cards are come generally you get one in five to six packs of cards now if you're buying them at walmart chances are you're probably seeing them going for five bucks a pop uh, plus tax depending on where you are so it gets to be really expensive if you're trying to hunt down these ex cards for your kid these are full art ex cards so kind of what let's give a good example here so this is a regular EX card. So as you can see, there has the picture of the Pokemon on it and then the rest of the card is just has a, a colored background or whatever. A full art card, on the other hand, has the artwork takes up the entire card. These are rarer than regular EX cards. So yes, even within EX cards themselves, there are different rarities. So the full art cards, um, are much rarer. Generally, sometimes you can get one in every 12 packs, um, if not more or less, depending on what the set is. So, you know, there are many different types of full arts. It's just a couple examples here of what they are. And generally, these are more rare. Then chances are your kid is going to also be talking to you about Omega. So Omega is actually a evolved version of a regular ex card so and just to make matters even more confusing megas can also come in a full art variant so you can see the difference between the two cards there the mega mewtwo here only has the artwork and that portion of it so that's a regular um, mega and then this mega alakazam is a full art because there are artwork on the entire of the card so the other thing you probably are going to hear from your kid, they're going to say they want a Mega, and nine times out of ten, they're going to say they want a Mega Charizard. So Mega Charizard is one of the most sought-after cards in the game. Um, apart from really rare collector edition cards and stuff like that, they are definitely one of the most expensive. So this here is a version of him from uh, the Generations expansion, which goes for about 20 to 30 bucks. But some of the other expansions have some that go for 60, 70, even $80, depending on what it is. Here are just a couple other Megas we have here. thought I had one more out, maybe not. So yeah, so when you're looking for 
cards for your kid um nine times out of ten they probably aren't even going to play with it they just want to collect them and they want ones that have the biggest numbers so within the game let's look at this mega alakazam as an example so it has an attack called zen force this attack does 30 more damage for each damage counter in your opponent's active pokemon so if you're playing the game this situationally could be a great card but most kids looking at that they see 10 damage and they say this is not a great card <laughs> true or not perhaps not but when you look at a card like charizard that does 100 plus they like that better or even someone like Mega Blastoise here that does 180 damage. So each of these cards, while playing the game, can be great situationally. Many kids are just going to look for the damage done, and they'll say this is a better card. Um, which is also something to consider if you're trying to pick up one for a stocking stuffer or as a birthday present or whatever. Mew here is another good example. He does 10 plus damage, Psychic Infinity. Um, Yes, there's lots of text here, which it can be situationally even better than this 180 guy. But if they're not playing the game, they really aren't going to care. They just want damage. The other thing some kids look at are the actual health of the card. So in the top right here, you see what type the Pokemon is. This is a water type and his health is 220. This Mew is 210. So some kids will look at it and they just want the cards with the most health. That's their their end game their end goal so you know generally the ex cards themselves have less health the megas will have more health obviously there's some variation and sometimes you can get non ex cards with a great deal of health um, but that's pretty much where it is code cards are another thing that many parents don't quite get so each pack of pokemon cards well in general not all but each pack will come with a code card that kind of looks like this so what this will do is generally open up an entire pack of cards in the online version of the game so it's a lot of fun and it actually can be great for teaching your kids how to play um, the physical game as well as online uh, there are lots of great online tutorials and stuff like that these code cards are actually valuable They'll sell online anywhere from 30 cents to a dollar each. Sometimes they even go up depending on if they're for older sets or something. So don't throw them out, even if they're not playing. It's good to hang on to them, even if you want to give to a friend, uh, because they can unlock a lot of great rewards online and can teach them a lot about the game. Break cards are another variant. So this was introduced relatively recently in the game. So break cards are quite different because they are printed landscape so you know regular pokemon cards like this break cards are landscape um again they're cool looking cards and most kids will just look for damage done on them in terms of what's a good card or not either that or well in my experience anyway boys generally like the damage and sometimes you will get some girls who they're after the cuteness so if something is especially cute, that will have extra appeal and value as well. Um, so like, for instance, this Pyro break here, he does 180 damage. Um, most kids are not really going to care that he does 50 damage to himself because that's a big number. That's most, more than many EXs. So it can be desirable for them. Another variant of cards are rare hollows. So... Like before, with the rares, there's a star in the bottom right. Not sure if you can see it there. But in addition, there is a holographic effect on the artwork for the card. So these can be especially cool. They normally have some really neat artwork. Um, these are rarer than just normal rares. So if I pull up my another normal rare. So this is a regular rare card. This one on the right is not holographic. This one on the left is. Uh, many kids do like the holographic cards, especially because they oftentimes have bigger damage numbers or higher health pools, which, again, is, is king for many. Um, chances are, if you're on here watching this video, your kid is not a um, big Pokemon player. They've just got into it, or they're now just exploring or hearing about it at school. So... 
if you were buying from most kids the card on the right, they would probably think it's garbage. Um, simply because it has, you know, only 90 health, its damage is 30. Now again, situationally, the card on the right can be a rock star as well, but for most kids, they're gonna choose the one on the left nine times out of 10, unless, like I was saying before, they're after some sort of cuteness factor, and then they may go for a card that's cuter. Now, there are sometimes full art cards, such as this, where the artwork takes up the entire thing, which are not EX cards. Sometimes it's, it's a little tricky, but you'll know because there is no EX after his name. The card on the right is also a full art card, but there is an EX symbol after it. Um, many times kids, unless they're you know after something that looks cool, they'll prefer the EX cards nine times out of 10. So you might ask, what should I pay for EX cards? So eBay is a great place for picking them up. And generally for the cheapest EXs, you're gonna be looking anywhere from three to $5 for them. Uh, if you live in North America, that probably will include free shipping, or if not, they might be around a dollar each. Um, the prices go up from there. So full art cards generally are more expensive. They can go anywhere from $6 plus. Um, mega cards, the cheapest mega cards normally are around seven or $8 US. But then more expensive cards, such as the Mega Blastoise here or Mega Charizard, scale up greatly. So they can go anywhere up to $20, 30 40 even $50. Um, so it just really depends on your budget. If you're after just bulk and many cards and just want EX cards, um, you can pick up a whack of them for four or five dollars each. For fifty dollars, you could probably get ten. Um, if you're after rarer cards such as the Megas, yeah, you're looking anywhere from um, you know seven eight dollars and upwards from there. So while I don't have any here with me, fake Pokemon cards are growing in popularity. Um, I had some a while back and got rid of them. Fake Pokemon cards are generally very easy to tell because the paper stock is different. When you feel them next to another card, they're noticeably different, less. Um, sometimes they're more flimsy, sometimes they're more rigid. The other thing to note is you can just hold them up next to another card and oftentimes there's discoloration. It's way too dark, it's way too light. The, the color scheme is way off. The other thing is easy to tell oftentimes is the font often looks off. So, um, and also perhaps the language might be, the English in it might be very poor. So sometimes there are really bad translations of cards and when printed they, they look off. So it's, you know, very close together, um, the font, or there's an issue with, with how it's spelt. Uh, another thing to look for, many Pokemon cards um, that are fake will have inflated health and damage numbers. If your kid shows you a card that has you know, 1,000 health or does 1,000 damage, that's a fake card. <laughs> Pokemon has never and I don't think ever will make a card that has that much um, damage or power to it. Um, you get many people online that will sell. The big thing to worry about with the fake cards is many times kids will bring them to school and they will trade and take away all your expensive cards you've bought for your kid for these fake cards that are very flimsy and have zero value. Uh, so that's something to watch out for. Another thing to be aware of, I've actually had buyers complain to me that I was selling fake cards, are world championship cards. So these cards are slightly different. So I don't know if you notice here, these cards are two world championship cards and they have silver borders, which is a, a big difference. And they also have signatures on them. So the deal with World Championship cards is that they are printed by Pokemon yearly and they're the winners of the various divisions or high place finishers um, in the Pokemon World Championships. So if you are really good at the World Championships, you get your deck immortalized in a World Championship deck that Pokemon prints and releases once a year. Usually it's towards the end of the year. So the other big way to tell these are the backs are different. 
so it's not the standard Pokemon back. They will have the Pokemon um, World Championship logo, and they will have the year of the World Championship card. Um, this has been going on for a while. I don't even know when it first started. In the early 2000s, at least, 2003, 4, 5. Uh, it's been going on for a long time um, that these have been printed. So they are not fake cards. Um, they just look different. The other thing to note with these is that they are not playable in tournaments, in sanctioned tournaments. They're not allowed. They're great for collecting. They're great for, you know, to look at, to have in your kid's binder. But if they're looking to actually play down at the local place, um, they're not going to be allowed to play um, in any sort of tournament which gives out prize cards. Not prize cards, uh, prize money. Um just really because many of the more very expensive cards are just reprints so that you know people can see what they look like and can practice with them at home and such but it's not tournament legal so if you have any questions or anything please leave a like in the comment i kind of just wanted to make a video for parents that come and buy from me every day and you know have these questions about you know what their kid would like or or, you know, not sure about what the game is and what the cards look like. Um, and just thought it might be helpful. So, yeah, any questions you have, ask or let me know. And, you know, I'll try to make a follow-up video or answer in the comments um, to kind of get you on the same playing field as your kid. Thanks for watching.